In this video, we're going to review strong induction, or also known as the second principle of mathematical induction, and compare it to the first principle of mathematical induction, or mathematical induction, to see the difference. So the learning outcomes for this section is simply to use strong induction to prove recurrence relations. So in, you will notice that I have not assigned any problems specifically from section 5.2, because essentially all I want us to be able to do is apply strong induction to prove recurrence relations for this course. So we don't have to worry about the other mathematical applications of strong induction, so this just might complicate things. And, and what we really need to use it for is simply to prove various recurrence relations, and we'll look at examples of the specific recurrence relations that require mathematical induction and those that re require strong induction, which as you can imagine, at least appear stronger. Okay, so what is strong induction? So again, it's a method of proof used to prove a property for all positive integers n. And again, note that p of n is simply a propositional function, so p of n is just a general way to denote any property, but when you're proving a property of the natural numbers, you want to specifically write out what that property is to make it easier to do a proof by strong induction in this case. So again, method of strong induction does also involve two steps, a basis step and an inductive step. And the basis step is exactly the same as for mathematical induction. Basically, we want to prove the property for the first natural number in which it holds. In most cases, that will be to prove the property for one, in other cases, it may be to prove it for some positive integer b, which may be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so once we have proven the property for the first natural number it applies to, we apply the inductive step. In this case, we are going to assume an inductive hypothesis. So for strong induction, that induction hypothesis is stronger, hence why we call this form of induction strong induction. So our inductive hypothesis is not simply that the property holds for some arbitrary fixed positive integer k, but instead it holds for every positive integer less than or equal to that fixed positive integer k. So we fix an arbitrary positive integer k and assume that the property holds for every integer less than or equal to k, and then we proceed to prove the property for the next integer, k plus 1. So, notice that our induction hypothesis is stronger, formally, since we are assuming more than just the property holds for k, but assuming that the property holds for every natural or positive integer less than or equal to k. And we proceed to show why it holds for k plus 1. And then the same reasoning as for mathematical induction, this inductive step then tells us how to prove the property for every positive integer n hence proving the property for all positive integers n. So again, this says that as soon as we have proven, so we prove the property for the first integer, say 1, and then we apply the induction hypothesis to tell us how to prove the property for 2, right? So in this case, our induction hypothesis will be the same. So using that the property holds for 1, the inductive step tells us how to prove the property for 2, but now what's the difference here? So in order to prove the property for 3, we can assume or we can use that p of 1 and p of 2 are true to prove p of 3. And then to prove p of 4, so the property for 4, we can we will use or may use that it holds for 1, 2, and 3 to prove it holds for 4. Now notice that our hypothesis isn't actually stronger. So what do I mean by that? Well, in mathematical induction, remember, we simply only use that the property holds for k to prove the property holds for k plus 1. But notice that by our application of mathematical induction, we actually know that the property holds for every natural number less than or equal to k. Right? So remember before, in mathematical induction, we proved it for 1, and then our induction hypothesis told us, told us that if we know how to prove it for 1, the induction hypothesis tells us how to prove it for 2. So, just as in the case we just talked about, we use 
the fact that we know it's true for one, we use the inductive step to tell us, to give us a proof for two. So then we know that p of one and p of two are true. To show p of three, we simply use that the property holds for two to show that it holds for three. However, we do know that it does in fact, the property does in fact hold for one and two. So even though we don't use the strength of this stronger hypothesis, we do in fact have that that is true. So this is the reason that strong induction and mathematical induction are in fact equivalent. So if they are equivalent, when do we use one over the other? Well, we can always use strong induction instead of mathematical induction and take advantage of the, high, the bigger induction hypothesis that we have in both cases, but in some cases we don't need to use that stronger hypothesis, and so we don't, because it simply complicates matters. However, you will see um, instances where we in fact do need that to apply that stronger hypothesis. We do need to know that the property holds for every natural number less than or equal to k in order to prove it for k plus 1. For example, consider proving a recurrence relation. In particular, let's consider the Fibonacci sequence. So the recursive relationship for the Fibonacci sequence requires that we sum the previous two terms of the sequence together. So this means that we need the property or the formula, the close formula for this um, recurrence relation to hold for the two previous terms of the sequence in order to find the next one. So that means that we can't simply look at the previous term of the sequence and apply the formula there because we also need to know what happens to the term prior to that. Um, and so that's why we need this stronger induction hypothesis to be able to apply the formula for every um, term of the sequence less than or equal to the one we're looking at. Hopefully uh, this has not confused you, but nonetheless in class we'll look at specific examples of applying strong induction versus mathematical induction so it will become clearer.